Hello everyone. I made some change to the requirement system in RPG Builder, both on how many types are, you know, now available as well as where they are possible to require. So quick example of what requirements are. Right now, if we look at the RPG Builder window, we are inside the combat tree and the mage combat tree. So if you go here, in previous video, I showed you we could, you know, require abilities to be known to unlock a specific ability and so on. But as you can see now, if I add a new requirement here, for example, I increase the list quite a bit. So I'm going to go over them all right now because I don't think I made a specific video to requirement before. So let's go through that. Um, so we have points spent. In this case, it, it can require a certain amount of points being spent in this tree, right? Class level. In this case, we can slot any class you want. For example, Paladin and require a level to be equal or above to this amount. And of course, remember that um, recur you can have as many requirements as you want in most cases. So for combat trees and everything I'm going to show later, there are no limits. So in this case, we will not be limited to just a class level. We could also require a skill level. In this case, we could require mining to be level seven or I mean, eight or above. Anyway, let's just keep to one for now and go through the list. So we already just showed the skill one item. So item can require, for example, to have a blue flower on you. And instead of having just one, you could require to have four. And um, that's it. But you can also choose if it should be consumed or not. So for example, you, for this ability, you could require to have four blue flowers. But then you can choose if you want the player to keep them in his bag or to actually have this as kind of a cost, you know, so it will cost you for uh, blue flowers to learn this ability. When I say learn this ability, it's because right now we're looking at a combat tree, but it's whatever action will be triggered after this requirement is met, right? So ability known, of course, this can require you to have a specific um, ability, you know, known or unlocked. So in this case, we could require to have the life aura uh, first, and then you can only uh, require, I mean, learn the fire wave. A recipe so for example to unlock the fire wave you could require the iron bar uh, recipe to be um, known so recipe is crafting recipe of course a resource node so just like recipe and abilities you can require a resource node these are the new ones um, I mean these are all new anyway but these are from today you can now require a specific race so we have only one race right now but let's say we had uh, human and orcs you could require or like some abilities or some things in your game can now require um, to be a specific race. This is very cool. This is for quests. So let's say once again, I'm taking the ability as an example right now, but it could be anything else. Um, but let's say that for this ability, we require the specific quest to be. But the cool thing is that I did not only made it possible to require a quest to be completed or something. I made it possible to choose any state. So you can uh, require a quest to be ongoing, completed, abandoned, failed, or turned in. So it's quite a few um, more options here that you can, you know, once again, give you more option to customize and create your very own game exactly how you want it and not feel limited ever. Like my main goal with RPG Builder, what I'm working hard on every single day is to make sure that when you use RPG Builder, you never feel limited. Like I really want you to, to have full freedom on how you develop your game. So, and the last one is NPC killed. So in this case, you could require the human mage, which is either like a mob, or maybe you could even require a boss in the game to be killed. And then, um, you can require how many times this uh, NPC should be killed. So for example, to unlock this ability, we could require to kill five human mage first. So very cool. In my opinion, like this, um, requirement system is really uh, opening up to many, many possibilities on how you design your game. And I'm super happy about how it turned out. So this works for the combat tree, um, system, you know, so like for the talent trees and stuff like that. But I ported that also to the crafting trees. So crafting recipe and crafting trees can now have the exact same requirement as well as gathering trees. So gathering trees, once again, they have the exact same requirements, which is great. And even more, I ported this also to the quest. So the quest system also now use the same requirement list. So for example, to be able to accept or to see a, a specific quest in game, you could require all those things. So just a quick example. Uh, if you wanted a quest in your game to only be visible to a player when he killed um, the human warrior, 
you will do that just save and that will work right away or if you would want um to i mean you know have a quest only to a specific race also possible just by doing this and assigning a race here and saving if you create now a character which is not of this race and going game you will never so you will never see this quest um, available from the npcs or you could require a certain crafting recipe. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, this is very cool. And the last um, place at which this um, requirement system has been ported to is the interactive node. So if we look at here, we have a copper hole. And the only downsides of um, the requirement on the interactive node is that for now, I didn't do a specific, um, like, I mean inspector for this part so you have this ugly list of fields but don't worry in the future I'm going to make sure that based on the uh, requirement type it's only showing the um, uh, proper values but for now please do not pay attention to this too much but you see that um, uh, interactive nodes right now can also require this exact same list so let's just quickly have a, an example in this case, it's a copper ore, so it's not the best example, but imagine that this copper ore is now a chest with some very cool loot inside. You could require many, many different things for this chest to be open. Once again, you could, for example, require this chest to have a specific NPC killed um, before. So, for example, maybe five or maybe a boss. Imagine you would want a room, like in a dungeon or something, with a boss and a chest behind that, but you cannot open this chest unless you kill this boss. This is just a very, very good um, use case example, in my opinion. Um, same, like if you wanted a specific quest or a specific race, all these options really, you know, give you, once again, a lot more freedom on how you um, play and design your game. So I'm super happy about it. I hope you are too. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment if you like this all. Join the Discord and see you in the next video.